to uh, start when you're ready. Sure thing. Uh, so hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Andrew. I'm one of the chief residents this year at Rusk. Uh, I just wanted to start by saying thank you to everybody for tuning in. Uh, thank you to PMR Scholars for providing us with an awesome platform to enhance our outreach and awareness for our program. Um, and I just want to just for everybody who's tuning in that I uploaded this presentation in its current form to the PMR Scholars Google Drive. So you can always reference it in the future if you need to. So I just want to start with, uh, you know, orientation to NYU or Rusk as an institution. So uh, many of you may have heard of Dr. Howard Rusk. So he was a, actually an internal medicine physician who, you know, began his practice, I believe, and he eventually relocated to Pauling, New York, uh, where he started a uh, Air Force-based program for rehabilitation for veterans coming out of World War II. Uh, he was actually recruited to NYU uh, and actually opened the first university-affiliated department, uh, as well as unit at Bellevue uh, in 1948. Uh, he headed the department for just over 30 years. Uh, him and collaboration with colleagues and therapists developed many firsts that are, you know, commonly practiced today. The inclusion of psychology and rehab with patients with, a, you know, a lot of patients have adjustment disorder when they have these major injuries. Uh, the importance of pediatric care, uh, voc vocational reintegration for a lot of these patients. And uh, after he passed away, the department was renamed in his honor in 1984. Uh, and we, you know, continue to practice our mission statement, which I wrote right there. Um, you know, NYU as an institution is, has robust offerings across all of its GME programs. You know, we've been recognized in the past couple of years, including uh, this current year, as one of the best hospitals in the country. Uh, what that allows for is robust kind of um, referral bases from orthopedics, uh, rheumatology, neurosurgery, neurology. They're all top 10 programs as well. Uh, we have a very active transplant institute, uh, an NCI designated cancer, comprehensive cancer center. So, you know, we are fully involved and integrated across the, the medical center as experts in rehab. So just uh, going to our program leadership, uh, Dr. Flanagan is the current chair of the department. He uh, has been here at Rust for a little over a decade now. He also has national presence at the APMNR. He's the secretary and is involved uh, with that uh, as well. Uh, he does teaching rounds with us. He's traumatic brain injury primarily by his subspecialty, and he'll do teaching rounds with us at one of our uh, inpatient sites every Friday. Uh, Dr. Moroz is our current program chair, um, our program director, excuse me. He also has national leadership positions with the AAP. Uh, Dr. Lopez and Dr. Racine are both our associate program directors, and they focus on different aspects, uh, curriculum and professionalism, respectively. And we have five chief residents this year. Uh, I'm one of them, uh, but my uh, co-chiefs all focus on different aspects. Uh, I just happen to be the chief who's kind of directing uh, residency recruitment and the whole interview process. So residency here at NYU, uh, we offer 36, or we have 36 residents. We offer 12 advanced positions per year. We're one of the largest programs in the country. We also have two uh, fellowships in the department. There's uh, the Brain Injury Fellowship and the Sports Medicine Fellowship. So uh, for TBI, uh, we are a model system. You guys may have heard this uh, term as you started learning about programs. So what that means is that we just contribute to a lot of the national data for brain injury outcomes, as well as uh, epidemiology and statistics. We do have a locked unit. So what that actually means is that we can take patients with extreme agitations or disorders of consciousness who we have all the resources to kind of support those patients. So we get very robust training uh, when it comes to uh, managing patients who have sustained a brain injury. Uh, we also have a dedicated multi-specialty outpatient uh, concussion center. So that uh, includes neurology, sports medicine, uh, and other departments. Uh, segue into our sports medicine fellowship. Uh, so that's through the PMNR department. Uh, it enables residents who are interested in sports to have access to pre-participation physicals. We actually have a dance clinic that we rotate through on our sports month. Uh, for people who are interested in, in performance art medicine. Uh, we do sports coverage or can go with a fellow for both. Uh, we actually also have a primary care sports uh, medicine fellowship. So with either fellow can attend NYU or St. Joseph's College, which is in Brooklyn. Uh, and uh, the most popular one that people do is the New York City Marathon. Um, and just to point out pictures here, if anyone wants to challenge Perry to his grip strength, <laughs> uh, my, I could not get over 100, but I believe he hit uh, 152 right there. And uh, this past year at AP Menar, uh, we were third in the quiz bowl. Um, so. so just talking about our training macroscopically, 
Uh, so like I mentioned, we have 12 advanced positions per year. So you'll do your intern year, which I want to emphasize as, as a total aside, you know, it's really important, I think, to get a robust uh, inpatient or I guess intern year, uh, because it's going to lay your foundation for acute care that's going to serve you invaluably when you're doing consults in the future, whether it's patients on surgery services, uh, after the ICU, uh, you know, having a good robust intern year is going to prepare you well. Uh, as a PGY2, we have eight months of inpatient. So uh, the focus of your PGY2 year for sure is inpatient. You're going to be experts at managing patients who have uh, inpatient needs, as well as what we call the emergencies in rehab. So patients who have autonomic dysreflexia, uh, hemorrhagic strokes, uh, hydrocephalus, sepsis, anything like that, that you know, might require urgent attention, uh, you're going to be, uh, get to be comfortable managing that. As we shift towards the, your senior years as a PGY-3 and PGY-4, you have less inpatient volume and more outpatient. Uh, and as you transition to PGY-4, you know, we really want to emphasize your growth as a physician and as a leader. You know, as physiatrists, we become experts in leading the team uh, for patients who require multi-specialty care. So uh, you are leading the consult service at Bellevue, you're leading the floor service at Bellevue, you're leading the clinics at the VA. Um, and so I'll talk about our sites in a couple minutes. I also just wanted to mention our uh, formal mentorship program. So as a PGY2, before you come here, we like to get a sense of your potential career trajectory. So we want to pair you up with a faculty mentor. We have faculty who've trained in all subspecialties as well as general rehab. Um, and then you will also be paired with a PGY3 and PGY4 in a, so to speak, med uh, resident family. Um, and of course, if your career aspirations change, we can always uh, realign you with a faculty member who can better advise you. Where alumni have gone in the last three years. Uh, so I just wanted to list the programs here. Um, so we have people who have gone on to fellowships in different ACGME subspecialties, pain, sports, pediatric rehab. Uh, people have uh, pursued the sports and spine match. Uh, this year is one of the first, I believe it's the formal first year of doing the NAS match, which actually comes out this week. Uh, so good luck to people who are doing that. Uh, people have gone to academic jobs, private practice jobs, um, so really spans the, the continuum and I think that speaks to the diverse training that we have here at Rusk. Uh, to also just mention fellowships within the institution, you know, we have fellowships within our department, like I mentioned, TBI, uh, sports medicine, we have pain medicine through the anesthesia department, palliative care with medicine and neuromuscular medicine with the neurologists. So speaking about uh, the institutions that we primarily rotate at, uh, so at NYU, I kind of mentioned it before, it's a large integrated academic medical center. There's over a thousand beds. Uh, we have uh, robust services across all facets of medicine. We, have, we are a comprehensive stroke center. So that means uh, in addition to the excellent stroke and acute care that the neurology department provides, we have early, um, I guess, role in caring for those patients as well within 24 hours of them you know, hitting the ED. We also have uh, NCI designated comprehensive cancer center. We have two physiatrists that are actually working uh, in the cancer center and we rotate with Dr. Sokoloff as, as an outpatient in oncologic rehab clinic. Um, at Bellevue, uh, it's the anchor of the New York City public health system. It's the oldest public hospital in the United States, uh, founded in 1736. Um, it is the designated trauma center for, I believe it's below 60th street. So, you know, any sort of trauma that, that happens there, they're immediately transitioned to Bellevue. Uh, the president's in town, they are, this is the designated center where they go. Uh, we also have a uh, department of corrections patients up on the 19th floor. So, you know, we get lots of consults for them. A lot of interesting EMG cases for, you know, uh, radial neuropathies from handcuffs. You know, we pick that up all the time. Um, so that, I think that's also a unique aspect. Uh, at the VA, we rotate at two out of the three VAs, uh, or I guess there's four VAs, I guess, in, in the New York City, but we rotate at two of them, the Manhattan and Brooklyn VA. Uh, they're only outpatient. The Manhattan VA specifically is a referral center for VAs all the way as far south as Pennsylvania through Connecticut. Uh, complex cases, you know, they get sent to the Manhattan VA. So just to kind of transition into orienting you guys. So um, a majority of your time, 33 out of your 36 months is going to be in this red box, which is on uh, the east side of Manhattan and Murray Hill and Kipps Bay. Um, so streetwise, uh, the furthest south for those 33 months is down on 17th and 2nd. And uh, two of our major outpatient sites are up on 38th Street. Um, so our inpatient sites, there's three of them. There's Tisch Hospital, which is the main campus on 34th and 1st. Bellevue, which is just a couple blocks down on 28th Street and then the Langone Orthopedic Hospital, which is down on uh, 17th Street. 
Uh, we also rotate at some outpatient clinics in Brooklyn, and I'll talk about those in a couple minutes. Um, but you know, I think a, one strength of our program is that you could live and work in the same area if you wanted to. Um, I'll talk about it a little bit later. Residents live in, in various parts of, of the city as well. But uh, if you really want that kind of close commute, uh, it's very, very doable. So talking about our inpatient sites, uh, so Tisch, uh, which is the main campus, we have a medically complex unit there. Uh, I mentioned it earlier, so NYU has a robust um, transplant institute. So in, in the last year, I actually looked it up earlier today, they did, uh, in the last year, eight patients had uh, heart and bilateral lung transplants, uh, over 40 heart transplants, um, over 50 lung transplants. So a lot of those patients actually come to that unit. We also have patients who, dysfascular patients who require amputee care, um, so that's kind of where they go to that unit. Uh, at Bellevue, which has 30 beds, that's where we have our uh, lock TBI unit, as well as general rehab. We get a lot of post-trauma uh, patients, as well as some uh, DOC patients. And then at, uh, the, at LOH, the Landing Orthopedic Hospital, that's where we do, uh, that's where the majority of Rusk is in terms of its inpatient footprint uh, services from ortho rehab, TBI, stroke, uh, spinal cord injury, um, that's all there. And all these sites are with EPIC. Uh, for those of you who are curious what EMR we use. In terms of our outpatient clinics, uh, so like I mentioned, uh, these for outpatient for three of the months, that's when you do kind of venture outside that part of uh, Midtown Manhattan. So you spend some time in Sunset Park, which is uh, NYU's Brooklyn Hospital, and you spend two months at the Brooklyn VA, which is down in Bay Ridge. And I want to point out the fact that the NYU has its own ferry that <laughs> travels between the main campus and Sunset Park. Um, so that is a pretty easy way to get down there, especially if you live near the hospital. Uh, but we rotate through all these, uh, you know, across the spectrum for rehab care, sports, pain. Uh, you do five months of EMG. Uh, th two of those, or three of those months are with neurology, actually, and then two of the months are with PM&R. So it's, it's, I think it's good to see both sides and both, uh, I guess, uh, perspectives in, in approaching EMG. Um, TBI and stroke, SCI, we do a lot of spasticity management, injections, pumps. Uh, pediatric, we also rotate through multi-specialty, orthopedic, neurology. Um, again, it's, I think it's important to kind of see what other fields, uh, and you educate them as well about what we can do as physiatrists. All NYU and Bellevue clinics are with EPIC, and the VA clinics, just like every other VA in the country, has CPRS. So I just want to talk about our residency schedule. I don't want you guys to get lost in all the words. I want you to just pay more attention to the colors. So for inpatient, you do 12 months. Uh, you end up doing five months of consults. So you start uh, a little bit on consults as a two, uh, but you more develop your consult skills uh, as a three and four. Uh, you do 17 months of outpatient. Four of those months are interspersed throughout your PGY2 year, uh, including an intro to EMG, where we want you to get proficient and independent in the neuroconduction study portion. Um, and it lays the foundation for your uh, time in the future. Uh, there's also two elective months that you're able to pursue, whether it's for career exploration or for dialing down um, you know, your pursued for or your desired fellowship. Uh, there are three tracks within the PGY three year where you're able to do get an elective during your third year. Typically for the other nine people is during your PGY four year. Uh, I'm applying to pain right now actually. And so I got one of those spots I was uh, able to do an elective. It ended up being a COVID elective, which I'll talk about in a little bit, but uh, uh, that's traditionally year in year out a good way for people to get early exposure. And I just want to list our average weekly hours here. You know, it gets better year in, um, as you advance with less call and less inpatient. So talking about our call sites, we have three call sites, like I mentioned. So at the main campus at Tisch Hospital, uh, the call room is actually across First Avenue. Uh, I joke we have actually have the nicest uh, call room in NYU. It's actually a studio apartment. Um, and so it's quite large. So it's, it's a very comfortable uh, call room. In Bellevue, it's on uh, one of the units on 6 West and down at LOH, it's on the first, fourth floor. Um, you know, every site has critical care and medicine consult available every single day of the year, 24 hours a day. Uh, you can always call your attending if you, you know, need backup to, to discuss a patient, but they are on site and there to help you. Um, and there are ICUs at, at all three sites. So if a patient's decompensating rapidly, there's a critical care attending who can triage them and take them upstairs. Uh, at HCC9 and LOH, uh, we have iPhones as our call device and Bellevue is still a pager. So our call frequency ladder. So just to let you guys know, so we do in-house call, which left. I think is uh, you know valuable because you have a post-call day. Uh, on a typical uh, call, you know you'll have I, I would say about five to six hours you get of sleep. 
I was on call last week and I slept just, just over seven hours, I actually timed it because I wanted to tell you guys. Uh, but I've, I've had one night in all of residency where I didn't sleep at all. I ended up transferring three patients that night. Um, so I feel like for every bad call, you get a couple of, you know, the ratio is in your favor for good calls. So as a two, you have 11 months where you're going to have four to five calls a month. As a three, you have 10 months where you're going to have three calls per month. You'll never have a Saturday. Uh, one will be a Sunday. Um, and then as a four, you're going to have seven months with two calls per month. So 14 calls for the year, only Monday to Thursday. Um, and so it definitely gets better as you advance. To just let you guys know about our residency pay and benefits. So there's two payrolls that uh, CAR is actually a national resident union. And you guys can research that online. I didn't know about it until I uh, came here and, and was uh, a part of the CAR payroll. Um, but every resident gets 20 days of vacation. Uh, they're taken in five-day blocks. Uh, you also have five personal days that you can use for research, uh, your, you know, a Netflix binge, exploring the city, whatever you want to do. And there's also five, six days if you need them. Uh, there's an education stipend annually, depending on your payroll, and a conference fund as well. And as far as extra money that, you know, I feel like people ask this question a lot. Uh, as you're a three or four, you can do uh, weekend admissions, $100 a pop. Um, so on average weekends, you know, you, that would be four to six uh, patients probably. Technologies. Uh, so, you know, the department provides us with an iPad mini. It has all our books, epic usability through Canto. Uh, we have ultrasounds at every site, uh, including uh, uh, online SonoSim ultrasound course that we can use to further develop our skills. Uh, everything is provided through that iPad. And I just want to put a shout out for our podcast. Uh, it's actually on, uh, you know, whatever you use to listen to podcasts, you can check that out as well. So our curriculum briefly, it's we do a 12 month cycle. You guys probably hear that 12 versus 18 month cycle. So you'll hear the whole thing three times. We avoid putting twos on call on Mondays so they can be there. Uh, we have a work, ultrasound workshop every six weeks. Today we actually had our shoulder one, which was the first one of the year. Uh, we have weekly journal clubs, grand rounds on Wednesdays. We have an annual board review course uh, that people from across the country will come and attend. Uh, but you know, it's right here and we attend that for free. Uh, and uh, every January is our anatomy uh, component. So we're in the anatomy lab for the three hours on Tuesday for that month. Uh, upper extremity one week, lower extremity one week, and then procedures. So living in New York City, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, one of the best places to live in the world. We have residents who live in three of the boroughs as well as New Jersey. Uh, I actually looked this up. There's 26,000 restaurants to explore. Um, if, if you are, uh, you know, interested in exploring new palettes and seeing what else is out there, um, there's endless avenues to explore for uh, entertainment, Broadway, professional sports, concerts, subway performances are awesome. Um, and, plus. you know, it's a transportation hub and easy to get to wherever you want around the world. And here's just some other pictures uh, of us at conferences. Here was the depart or the residence uh, last year. Um, so I just want to let you guys know, uh, contacts, you know, uh, you can email me anytime. Uh, I'm happy to field questions. And Haley is our program coordinator. You, I also, uh, if you need someone to contact, she's also available. Uh, and I just want to leave you guys with some information for the rest of the cycle for us. So, you know, we have a virtual elective opportunity that uh, we've put out there. Uh, you can use this QR code here. You can put up your phone. And if you want to sign up for that, it's just a quick questionnaire. Uh, we're doing a Zoom meeting greet at the end of the month. Uh, if you want to sign up for that, you can, you know, put your uh, camera up to here, and that's also a short questionnaire. All our interviews are going to be virtual uh, in December and January. Um, so just to let you guys know, I assume that's going to be most programs, but you know we're just calling it, and that's what it'll be. Um, and please explore our website to learn more about the program. We have videos. We have resident bios, faculty bios. You could read about our research uh, initiatives. And uh, yeah, that's it. So again, thank you for tuning in, and uh, you know, happy to field questions now or in the future. And we'll have the chat box uh, as a place to continue asking and answering questions and sharing your comments.